nose is running. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Bernice Ross, the CEO and President of Brokerage Up and Real Estate Coach.com. And I'm really happy to have Tiffany McQuaid with us today. She is the president of McQuaid and Company. And Tiffany is in Florida. Uh, they were very fortunate about missing Dorian. But I've asked her to share with us today, before and after the hurricane, because she has lived through a Cat 5. She was uh, in Irma and right at the eye of the storm when it hit. So this is a firsthand uh, account of what it would have been like for a few hours as compared to what happened in the Bahamas. But we want to take a look at what you can do when you are, uh, when you're a realtor in this kind of disaster, whether it's an earthquake, hurricane, fire, whatever it is, hits your community. Tiffany, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Bernice. Always delighted. Well, first of all, you've been through three different hurricanes. So um, you were through Irma and you, um, you got prepared for Dory and you've been through one other. Tell me what you did having experienced a Cat 5 hurricane in the past to get ready for Dorian in terms of your plans and what, you know, for you personally and what you experienced. Well, obviously, you know, experience is uh, the great catapult of being able to know, you know, what to do and, and learn from. Um, unfortunately, this is one of those experiences that you really don't want to have, but I'm fortunate to have had it. Uh, you know, getting ready for Dorian, we took it very seriously and fortunate that it did not come our way, but, you know, it makes your heart really go out to the Bahamas. Um, and seeing, you know, what they're enduring. But, you know, in preparation for something like this, I don't think um, people, if you're not in it, uh, whether it's a hurricane or any kinds of emergency, you know, it's hard to really grasp and wrap your head around, you know. So that learning experience of going through Irma and, and preparation, you know, we went around and took care of all of our listings, pulling all of their furniture in, um, pulling all of our real estate signs out of the yard. The last thing you want is them going airborne uh, and injuring somebody or a property potentially. Um, we helped put up hurricane shutters. We helped, um, you know, do whatever needed to be done to prepare a property. You know, for us in the summer, um, when we have listings, obviously homes show better when, you know, the lanai furniture is out there. You know, that's the main part of being in Florida. You want to have the nice outdoor area so you can really enjoy it. So it's so important that that's set up for showing. But the hazard of that is when we're in hurricane season, and that's something that um, my company always offers our customers, is that should a storm be coming our way, that we will help oversee getting that all addressed. So, you know, we got through that process, but we were in full on preparation. And you know, the things that people really don't realize is, you know, you have to make sure you fill your gas tanks um, just in case, you know, electric goes out or what have you. You got to have a full tank to be able to get around, um, you know, being able to have certain supplies uh, and things and making sure your phone is good and charged because, you know, that was something that we learned from Irma when it came through is that, you know, cell towers went down. So it was very hard and very spotty to find cell signal. You know, and that really became uh, a big value add that you could provide if you were lucky enough to be able to post and share on social media, you know, certain parking lots or areas that you were able to pick up service for certain providers because, you know, maybe AT&T wasn't available in one parking lot, but they were in another, you know. So it was just, you know, you'd see people even parked on the side of the road when they'd be going down the road and see they'd get a few bars, you know, literally just parked on the side of the road trying to get cell signal. So, you know, it's things like that that you don't really realize um, are so important, you know, as you're going through a storm like this. So one of the things I'm curious about, uh, because I know in some places, if you have a sump pump or, uh, you know, depending on what kind of drainage you have and what kind of sewage system you have, you may right. not eat, be able to flush your toilets or get yes. water. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and then we certainly have outlying areas here um, as well that, you know, are in that case scenario. And even, you know, after the hurricane happened, um, I went around, was fortunate enough to put out on social media that if there was anyone that wanted me to check their property or check on someone, you know, uh, I 
really took advantage of the opportunity to help our neighbors and you know the community. And one case scenario in regard to that was um, someone had reached out who hadn't been able to get a hold of their mother since the hurricane, and she was in a rural area. You know, no um, no capability to be able to flush or anything like that. Water had set in. Uh, her property was set back. She had just a small car and could not get out of the driveway. Um, everything was, you know, kind of backing up and what have you. Could not get out of the driveway and therefore could not obtain cell signal within her um, area. So, you know, kind of went out and, um, you know, <laughs> braved my way through uh, the water and everything, you know, with your heart palpitating because you don't know what you're going to you know, find, uh, you're praying for the best, but preparing yourself, you know, as well. And, you know, luckily she was fine and she was in great shape. So probably the best feeling then was to be able to get back in the car. I still had to drive like a good two miles in to get cell signal to let um, the, their family know that she was okay. But boy, what a great feeling that was to be able to, you know, just the relief that you know you gave those um the, the family members was just the, the best feeling so it helped offset the stress of going through the entire dynamic to be able to issue good news you know so you said that you did you personally visit 200 properties yes yes wow so That's in impressive. the community where i live we have um 300 homes and we were like Fortunately or unfortunately, right in the eye um, of the hurricane kind of went right over us. So, you know, the good thing about my area, I'm in a golf course community and we have, we've been around quite a while. So we have a lot of stately trees. So with that said, we had about $8 million worth of damage, you know, on the golf course. But with that, that's a lot of trees and things to go down. So being able to maneuver through the community was very difficult. There were many uh, side streets that I could not even get down for days until, you know, and I went around helping neighbors move. We all heave hoed um, tree trunks wherever we could to just move them out of driveways so people could ingress and egress, uh, you know, at least at the onset. But, you know, people don't realize that that's such a huge component. So many of um, my neighbors, friends, customers, um, it, within that community, I just went around, whether I was walking or, or driving, went around and I would walk around everyone's properties, the circumference. I would take photos of them and then I was texting or emailing them to them. <laughs> I would drive to find signal and I just house after house after house after house, you know, would send to give them peace of mind, you know. It's so important, you know, when people are not there and they're not knowing what's going on you know being able to provide peace of mind is a, a huge bonus gift for sure well the fact that you did that and took the initiative on it now you actually you mentioned you were in the eye of irma which was a cat five when it hit what was that whole experience like because i mean uh, everybody I've heard describe going through a hurricane with the wind says it's pretty terrifying. What did you experience? Yeah. Well, you know, you think you're strong, um, strong and have a lot of strength as an individual. And when things like that happen, you know, you go through it um, and you really find how strong you really are when you come out on the other side. But I endured it in my closet, um, in my master bedroom. And <clears throat> fortunately, I assume it was a walk in closet. It was a walk in closet. <laughs> and I endured it with my little dog at the time. And um, my assistant, Helen, who had retired a few years ago, she was with me 12 years, and she didn't want to leave the area because her husband was in a nursing home here uh, battling Alzheimer's. So her and I hunkered down in my closet together. And, you know, in going through it, you don't, obviously, you can't really look out. We were completely closed in, so you don't know what's happening. And there were many times when I thought the roof was going to come off. Um, Literally, you know, you didn't know you're hearing all these sounds and all these noises and we endured it, you know, for several hours before the eye came through and then, you know, ultimately the backside. But, you know, it's just that not knowing the stress of what's happening. You can't see, you know, you feel so hindered in your senses, you know, of not being able to see your hearing, you know, you're 
it, it's, it's a crazy experience. And my heart aches for truly everyone in the Bahamas, because aside from what they're facing now, you know, the follow-up, the cleanup, the aftermath, you know, all the hours, because they had, what, 30 hours that that hurricane sat right over them. And I was trying to equate my mind to the few hours that we endured, which was brutal, you know, at the time, to all those hours, you know, and the, the aftermath of just the, you know, the kind of post traumatic stress, you know, of going through that and then having to handle cleanup on top of it. You know, we're blessed in Florida and that our um, building codes are so high and so strong, you know, the, the highest in the country, uh, I believe. So, you know, for us, a cap five, we really didn't see much property damage other than, you know, if a tree hits or pool cages, you know, getting mangled, you know, other than that, it was all vegetation based for the most part. So, you know, we were very blessed from that perspective and looking at an area like the Bahamas or other parts of our country that, um, you know, the building codes are not as intense that, you know, we're being impacted as we speak. You know, these are things that you just don't even really realize. So let's talk about the aftermath, you know, because, um, you experienced what I did when I went through the 1994 earthquake in California, in Southern California, the Northridge quake. So what happened with your insurance company? You know, when did they make their first offer? What, you know, yeah. what kinds of things did you find that you didn't expect? And this is something that's a real eye opener to anyone who hasn't yeah. been through a disaster before. Yeah. Well, this is a huge learning experience. Um, huge learning experience. And I'm going to approach it from two levels. Number one, um, I, I, here's what I learned that's probably the most valuable lesson. And that is, as I was going around kind of collecting everything of value that I thought I was going to need after the hurricane, meaning, you know, birth certificate, social security cards, passport, you know, all of the insurance paperwork, you know, I gathering a will, you know, I mean, truly. So I'm gathering all of these things. And what I found in this, um, which was, a huge eye opener for me is I, as I'm going around collecting everything of value to me, I realized that everything of value other than people fit into a small plastic container that I was able to fit inside my dishwasher. And it was the most eye opening experience that I learned in preparation of the hurricane that, wait a minute, you know, I'm walking around, I'm looking at my entire house and you know, all of this, realizing that you know there's really nothing here that although i love these things and i value them but they don't mean anything to me you know aside from just being you know their very presence so the main value to me all fit in this little box so that was a huge learning experience a question for you you put this inside your dishwasher because yeah. chances are it's still going to be there after the hurricane right 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 i mean dishwashers obviously you know used to the water um and they're built into cap mine was built into my cabinetry you know which they typically are so you know it's it's kind of a nice safe space um and and i notified my family in ohio um, you know, that that's where it would be, God forbid, you know, I mean, you really think through these things. So, you know, you want to make sure you're collecting life insurance, all of your property insurance, you know, passports, driver's license, I put my wallet in there. Um, you know, anything like that of value, you know, just all fits very nicely in your dishwasher. But as far as dealing with insurance afterwards, so, you know, I'm driving to a parking lot to get signal trying to call, you know, both my homeowners and for my office. So two entirely different animals I learned in going through the process. Number one, as far as the personal property, um, I was lucky that my insurance company, they were prepared, they jumped right on it, and they were at my property two days after the hurricane. So they came and assessed it, but here's what I learned, and this is so valuable. They want to pay you right away. You know, they want to, oh, you know, um, here, here's your check. This is going to be the value minus your deductible, blah, blah, blah. Here, here you go. You know, here's your check for whatever. Now, what I learned through this is it will be so important for you to really take your time and get a public adjuster to come out, to come out and take a look because you're 
jumping on this thinking, oh, I got to get somebody out right away. Now the quotes that you're getting, you know, right away, because of course contractors are, you know, they're being pulled out from a million different directions. So of course their costs, you know, are higher um, than, you know, maybe they would have been without a hurricane, you know, being involved. And, you know, you're, you're not really thinking clearly. So it's very important that, you know, you can have them come out and assess, but there's going to be things that you don't realize have happened, you know, and you may not find them for a week or so, because as we went through this, you know, we did not, at my property, I did not have power for about five days. So with that said, you know, there's food spoilage in, you know, your refrigerators and, you know, there's, um, things that set in, you don't know what happened to your air conditioning unit until the power goes back on. You know, so as it turns out, you know, I had issues there. I didn't realize the penetration that had happened from my pool cage repetitively hitting the roof that I actually had a 40 foot hole from that penetration that was wow. not clearly visible, you know, to the, to the naked eye at the time. So, you know, it ended up having, I had to get a whole new roof. Well, if I would have accepted what happened when they first came out, you know, and what they assessed, I would have been in a big pickle. So just understand that you're going to want to let some time lapse and you're probably, you know, in hindsight, I did not bring in a public adjuster, but I learned over time and was guiding my clients to get one and have one come in. Um, and it made a huge difference for them because, I, you know, I learned through them. So, you know, I kind of was the guinea pig myself. And then as they were coming back down from up north, you know, I was able to kind of guide them a little better um, through my uh, experience. And, you know, ultimately it was uh, a huge lesson. Well, you know, Tiffany, you raised such a good point because when I, you know, went through the 1994 earthquake, all the only visible sign that I had in my house that there was any damage was a little crack in the powder room floor, which is, yeah. you, know, you know, not a big deal. And I kept hearing stories about what had happened with other people and finally got somebody out there to inspect and my entire house had twisted on the foundation. Yeah. So all the doors, all the windows were out of alignment. I had a little crack in the, you know, like an eighth of an inch crack in the foundation, but that was enough to get in and take care of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, what happens, um, so you've got the PTSD, uh, you've got dealing with the insurance company, and by the way, what I don't know if you experienced this, but when we had the... Um, when we had an adjuster one day from the insurance company to give us one value and then somebody came out three days later and they give us another value, which was less than the first guy. And yeah. this went around. Did you bump into that at all? Yes. And it was really interesting to me um, in talking with my neighbors, you know, we all had different insurance companies and some would come out and, you know, I have, there were tiles missing on the roof. They would pay them for a whole new roof because the tiles were, um, you know, out of, out of stock or, you know, whatever. So, you know, it was very interesting to me to see the diversity in how insurance companies handled uh, the process, you know, and really um, got me understanding and respecting a little more the power of, you know, maybe some of the carriers that were more organized and prepared, you know, had teams on hand, you know, in the area ready to, you know, kind of dive in and help and uh, made a very big difference. You know, some of the smaller carriers just were simply not prepared to handle something like that. And I had um, several friends that had small carriers that drug out for months, months before they were able to even get anyone out to assess their property. Wow. You know, so these are things, you know, when people are shopping rates, to me, my best advice would be that you ask, you know, if I were to go with you, if I were to go with this company, how are you as a company prepared to handle disaster? You know, will you have people on hand? Will you have a dedicated number, you know, for this? How are you going to handle that? Because seeing the differentiation and how some of the companies handled it, uh, was a huge learning experience. I mean, I had friends that had to stay, you know, in rental units and stuff, um, 
off property because they just couldn't get an adjuster out there and you know things were continuing to evolve so you really have to think through that you know when you're it's not just about getting the lowest price for your insurance it's the what if what if you don't want to live your life in the what if but you do want to be responsible enough um, in your selection process to ask how will you handle a disaster well, that's such a great takeaway. Now, you had your insurance company did a little dance about not paying you. What did they do? Well, you know, they um, they wanted to pay in increments as work was getting done. You know, I think, and I, I think people need to understand that everything's negotiable to a degree. You know, you can go back and, you know, some people don't realize that if you find things a week later, you can go back and ask them to come back out and reassess. You know, they don't necessarily do it willingly all the time. <laughs> that's, that's a huge takeaway. It's yeah. just because they settle something and then you find something later, you still can come back. So yes. that's, that's yes. a huge takeaway for people that may be facing this, you know, with, uh, with Dorian or any yes. other disaster. And understand, be careful what you sign. You know, make sure and ask the question. If I find something a week later or two weeks later, can I come back to you? Because sometimes they'll have you sign something saying that you can't once they issue the check. It's a final settlement. Yes. And then the other thing to keep in mind is there's some mortgages that require that the insurance check goes through them, you know, and that they are involved in the payment to ensure the protection of their asset you know, that these things are getting repaired. And, you know, you'll find that, that was something that I didn't even realize. You know, the mortgage companies were sending people out um, regularly to assess their asset, you know, uh, regularly, each month, you know, mortgage companies coming through to make sure that there's progress on getting the repair work done and all of that. And there's many mortgage companies, um, and I have PNC, uh, that I had to actually go to PNC and have them endorse the insurance check, um, you know, at, to be involved in the process to ensure that the work was getting completed. So, you know, these are just things that you don't even think about. How did the, uh, how did Irma impact your closings? You know, when you were, uh, when you, when you went through that. So uh, did you see, you know, you had did you have any properties under contract at the time that Irma hit? Yes, many. Um, and it impacted us. We had 36 closings um, from September to December that did not happen uh, within a timely fashion at all whatsoever because you can't close on mortgages when there's damage to the property. Um, you can't get contractors in to complete the work prior to you know a closing. Um, you know, they're not going to underwrite insurance when there's damage, current damage to the property, you know, so there's so many things that go into place. So, you know, think about it from a brokerage perspective. And, you know, I had a fear that, you know, am I even going to be able to sustain through this? You know, I'm an independent broker owner that is not affiliated with a franchise that maybe could lean on, you know, a little bit. And these are things that you don't really think through in terms of being able to, how will you sustain when you've got 36 closings that all of a sudden are not gonna happen and are grossly impacting your bottom line? You know, so it became to me survival of the fittest that, you know, I put myself on the back burner. All I wanted to worry about was making sure my team was paid because I knew that they had families and things that they had to take care of. So they were my first priority. You know, second priority was making sure, you know, that our main core needs were addressed, you know, whatever it took on my end, I, whatever sacrifice, I made every sacrifice possible, you know, just to get us through that period. But what you don't realize, you know, we had insurance for the business, of course, but business insurance is entirely different because the eye of the hurricane did not go directly over where my office is located. Um, there, the coverage was not there, you know, so you're looking at loss of business coverage did not come into play. And it wasn't just me. I mean, all the restaurants in town that lost all of their food, 
you know, loss of business, you know, all of these things, I mean, grossly impacted for months. You need to read what's in your insurance policy if you're in hurricane land. And I can't yeah. believe that unless the eye goes over you. And that's a very small part of the hurricane. Within, yeah, within a certain within a certain um, mile range. And, you know, they, they really, uh, you have to really protect yourself, you know, from a business perspective. Now, one thing that was covered for me is we did have an electrical surge um, that came through that uh, blew out some of our equipment. So luckily that was covered. So we did get reimbursed, you know, for that. But, you know, and we had flood insurance. Fortunately, we did not get flooded. But that's something that so many businesses need to realize if you're in an area that can potentially be impacted, whether it's, a, you know, a, a rainstorm, tornado, whatever it would be, make sure you have flood coverage. Because um, as you're seeing now what's going on in the Bahamas, you know, that, that's a lot of water there. I mean, that destroys everything. So, you know, you, you need to really... Um, take that into account. No, Charleston is flooded. So, I mean, uh, just, and we don't know what's happening uh, in North Carolina as we're making this. Yeah. So, um, Tiffany, you've talked about realtors, what realtors can do to help. Anything else that you would suggest for them as, especially any of the people who are in the areas that have been impacted, like in the Carolinas and parts of North yeah. Carolina and Georgia? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, um, one of the things, you know, aside from being available to check on properties, and, and a lot of people in those areas being impacted right now are probably more year round, you know, so maybe not as many um, seasonal or transient um, property owners. So they're present, you know, but I think that from a realtor perspective, being able to be um, present, you know, the, we went and delivered pizzas, you know, we would go find like wherever was open. And, you know, I mean, you really don't realize your lack of choices and food and things of that sort when you go through this, you know, you've got your stuff in the closet and, you know, what have you. But when we found a pizza place that opened, we went and got tons of pizzas and went and delivered it around to all of our people, McDonald's, you know, we'd go buy bags and bags and bags of hamburgers as many as we could get our hands on and just go out and deliver them to people and they were so grateful you know even some of the workers that were out um, helping remove trees and things so you know that's something that is just a really important uh, community you know caring component and just taking care of people I think the greatest benefit of going through uh, something like that is I've never seen or felt so much outreach within the community of neighbors helping neighbors. I mean, everything from just being so patient and understanding and being in lines for hours to get gas and, you know, helping other people, um, you know, just remove trees and things of that sort. Just you felt the true, genuine caring. And that was a feeling that I was praying would continue on. You know, I, I don't think that you even realize that it's missing within a community or an area, you know, as much as it is until something like that hits. And the outpouring of just help is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it really is something that I wish could endure across the country all the time. Well, I share your sentiment because I certainly saw it in Los Angeles where it wasn't a place that's all that friendly. And then, you know, when we yeah. looked at the images a couple of years ago from Hurricane Harvey, when it hit Houston and you had 50 inches of rain yeah. and the first responders can't get you, there are not enough of them to go around, but people are out there with their boats, rescuing neighbors. And it just cuts across all those things. And it's just one person helping another. So yeah. Tiffany, a final takeaway for today. Final takeaway, I would say, is that, you know, this is always a time, and whether you're impacted by these or not, or just watching it on TV, you know, this is the time that we see the best of humanity, you know, whether you're in it, enduring it, you know, you, egos are gone, um, selfishness is gone, you know, prioritizing, your self completely shifts and it becomes, you know, very minimalist and you realize like the things that are most important, 
You know, you realize who do you want to reach out to first when something like this happens, you know, and, and then, you know, I think everyone's heart opens. So whether you're in the core of it or you're watching it, you know, this is truly a time to recognize and um, understand that, you know, we all need each other and just reaching out and caring um, no matter where you're at is so important. Well, thank you, Tiffany. Wonderful, you know, takeaway for today. We've been visiting with Tiffany McQuaid. She's the president of McQuaid and Company. They're based in Naples, Florida. Tiffany, thank you for sharing your experience and all the great things that uh, you've shared that can help people anywhere in the country that are facing a disaster. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bernice. I appreciate it.